There are many strange tales told all over America during the 20th all the way up to the 23rd century. These tales involve mysterious individuals who were believed to be dead, who now roam the world seeking revenge on those who wronged them, crazy lunatics who still worship a bomb that was the primary cause of the world's destruction, and even sentient machines who pose as humans looking to take over the world and overrule their once makers. However, there are some tales that still go around all over the country that have been around for many, many years. These tales tell of mysterious, terrifying creatures that roamed the land, terrorizing anyone that witnesses them, with many believing them to be just rumor and something of a folk tale. But in reality, they are extremely real, and if anyone were to witness one of these creatures, they would most likely not make it out alive. Or if they did, they wouldn't be believed by many people. These creatures and beings would be labeled as cryptids, and when the vaults opened around the 2090s and beyond, many of these mythical creatures would start roaming about even more than they used to, and sometimes killing or capturing anyone in their way. So what are the cryptids? Where did they come from? How deadly are they? And where are they located? Well, in today's video, we will be looking at all of the cryptids of Fallout, excluding some of the more generic ones, such as the Zayton aliens, which will get their own video. But for now, these are the mythical cryptids from the Fallout universe. Before the Great War began, stories told of a great wolf that roamed the Appalachian lands. This wolf was a female albino wolf who would raise her pups within this large-scale coal mining area that would later be known as the Ash Heap. For a while, that's all this was, just tales of a dangerous wolf defending her pups if anyone got near her den. However, one day, one individual would start to compile a load of reports about this wolf and what it had been up to, with one report stating that a bear had been completely shredded by something extremely vicious, and the only thing that was reported in the area being a pale monster that was located near Beckley. With these reports, one Janelle Priblo got intrigued by this monster and wanted to capture it for herself as she and her husband owned Priblos Curios, a shop specializing in selling merchandise relating to the Appalachian cryptids. With this goal, she would set off into the world to find the pale monster and kill it in the hope to sell it to the cryptid hunter known as Calvin Van Lowe. But along the way, she would be later joined by her husband, Raymond Priblo, to help her on her overall quest. As the two ventured the lands, Raymond would get too excited and ignored all of Janelle's warnings about this beast, stating it was extremely dangerous and that it could tear a bear in half if it meant to attack them, as well as warning him to not hold bait near its den. With those warnings ignored, Raymond did in fact bring bait close to the den and because of it, fell victim to the beast as it killed him in an instant. With her husband now dead, Janelle would be filled with rage and was even more desperate to get back at the beast that had killed her husband. But venturing alone would not cut it. She needed more people to take it out. Trying to leave the area to assemble a hunting party to hit back at the beast, Janelle would also be caught unaware and would be killed by the wolf. To this day, the beast of Beckley still roams the area, with many talking about its influence on the land, and with the Priblo family's story still being told by their holotapes left around the area. It would be down to the vault dwellers from Vault 76 to hunt this beast down and finally end it and its pup's reign of terror, thus ending the tale of this cryptid and its effects on the people of Appalachia. In 2075 within West Virginia, many scientists as part of an initiative to make a bigger effort of creating sustainable food sources across the country that was called the Greenhouse Initiative set up the West Tech Research Center that was ultimately to apply new mutations to create edible plants and vegetation. However, as the war started to rear its ugly head, the area changed its focus and once again began looking into human experimentation as part of the Super Mutant Project to help bolster their armed forces. For ages, this facility created many mutations using humans. However, almost all of them were failures, apart 
from two. Using an FEV strain called the FEVS006443 on the 14th of October 2077, this strain would be utilizing a combination of many different animals in the process, and doing that would end up with a quadrupedal creature with two arms housing three huge claws on each. Its body would have an overly enlarged torso, and it would also have a large sickle-shaped claw on each inner toe. The results were terrifying for the scientists as they stood and looked at what they had created, but it was living and it was stable. With the creature they would go on to name as the Snallygaster now created, the scientists wanted to release it into the Huntersville area to see what it was capable of. Now it had reached full maturity, but this was not to happen, not officially anyway, until January 3rd, 2078, after the Great War, where the mutant would escape its containment and the facility it was being held in. One wouldn't have been too much of an issue. However, this mutant would go on to procreate with most likely its Itself or another Snallygaster that had been made, and because of that, the Snallygaster mutants would spread all over Appalachia, hanging around in packs of four and go on to kill anything in their way, terrorizing anyone that would witness their horrifying selves. But that wasn't the last from the West Tech facility. In fact, one other mutant would be created within this facility that would become a core part of the Appalachian folklore and would also become far more deadly than the already deadly Snallygaster. Gaster. Another example of how deadly the scientists were at the West Tech Research Center was at the Huntersville facility, where the same group of scientists would develop another virus and use the FEV strain known as the FEVS006458 to create a horrific mutation that would have horrifying impacts on the land around them. Originally, part of this mutation was also used to create the horrifying previously mentioned creature, the Snallygaster, but with this strain, the scientists would modify it even further and with it would go on to create the creature later to be known as the Grafton Monster. This creature was created through pure flesh and eventually became so big that it shattered its containment unit. But apart from that, it was relatively stable with the only thing really lacking was its head. With a somewhat successful creation, the creature was sedated and later transported off-site via a truck. But during the process, the Great War began setting off nukes everywhere and blinded the truck driver. Side tracking the escort convoy and because of that allowed the monster to fully escape into the world. To this day many Grafton monsters roam the worlds in all different shades and variants with even some being heavily diseased all over their body. But there is one place they will always terrorize that being the AI run town of Grafton which sees the 7.5 feet tall gray colored skinned headless creature turn up every so often to kill anyone in its way. This cryptid became so well known and so feared all over that many tales were told about it, especially around Halloween, with one writer known as Stephen H. Patterson writing a story about a teenage couple being chased by it whilst venturing in the nearby woods. This cryptid certainly is one of the scariest to come into contact with due to its sheer size and veracity. However, it is killable as many of the vault dwellers from Vault 76 have found, constantly having to get into Grafton to defend it from this mountain of a creature created once again by the scientists of pre-war America. One of the cryptids on this list was actually just part of a friendly family, but after the Great War has now turned into something grand in stature and extremely deadly. Before the Great War that destroyed the world, Isaac Graham, a mining company owner and member of a large family, owned several sloths and stored them within his family estate. These sloths were notorious for breaking out of the estate, however, and were recorded to do so on multiple occasions. How they broke out, no one knows, but it must have been a slow process with no one really noticing. As the war arrived and the bombs eventually fell, it was quite clear that the sloths once again broke out from the estate, but now with no one to bring them back, would continue to venture out into the world on their slow journey to see what was out there and seek food and whatever else sloths seemed to do. With the world heavily irradiated from the bombs, but also the countless experiments that Voltec and Westec were doing around the Appalachian area, these sloths would become heavily 
slowly mutated over the years, developing three toes and becoming grand in size, so much so that they would become seen as legendary beasts all over. Not only that, but clusters of mushrooms grow all over their fur on their back, which if someone were to get close to them, would release clouds of spores that would be deadly if inhaled, making it sure that no one could get close to them to attack. But if you were to try and attack them, their fierce claws and razor sharp teeth will rip right into you and probably rip you in half. Whilst these creatures aren't hostile until they are attacked, they are an impressive sight to see and it's quite evident why so many regard them as legendary cryptids within Appalachia. Once a slow moving harmless pet, now one of the tallest creatures in the wild, the giant sloth certainly has made a name for itself within the West Virginia area. The story of the Sheep Squatch revolves mainly around one man, someone who we have previously mentioned in this video, a man known as Calvin Van Lowe, also known as Ares. Calvin was a passionate cryptid hunter who was a member of the Truth Seekers with his friends Scott Conroy and Ray Gary, whose main focus was to spot cryptids in West Virginia. But in the year of 2072, the Truth Seekers were to split as Calvin started attending Vault Tech University. However, for Calvin, the search for the cryptid, the Sheep Squatch, continued even during his studies. Eventually after graduating, Calvin would start to work for the company known as the Baish Company, an outer state energy corporation, and tasked Calvin, now known as the Black Sheep, to fabricate sightings of the Sheep Squatch to generate public attention utilizing two assaultrons provided by the corporation. Calvin started to fall out with the company as he requested more and more time out to work on the projects, and eventually reprogrammed one of the Assaultron units with Sheep Squatch mating ritual protocols to speed up the finding process. But the process went wrong and the Assaultron escaped the lab injuring Calvin in the process and meaning he would be declared as missing, leaving his sister to spend years searching for her lost brother. For years, Calvin had become absolutely obsessed with the idea that the Sheep Squatch myth was real and somewhere out there it really existed. But now under his new identity, Ares would still continue looking for this cryptid as well as any others out there. Little does Ares know that there are in fact many sheep squatches out there within Appalachia of many different varieties, and they are extremely deadly to anyone who comes into contact with them. Maybe it was for the best that Calvin never encountered one, because if he did, maybe he would have been killed in an instant. Despite saying in the introduction that we wouldn't be covering the aliens of Fallout, the Flats Woods monsters are aliens. However, very different from the traditional aliens with green skin and big black eyes. The Flats Woods monster are hovering creatures with glowing purple eyes and are known all around for abducting wastelanders. These creatures, rarely seen by many people, are said to completely warp the mind of anyone who comes within mere feet of them, with only those with iron will being able to fight off their powers. Rumors of these aliens all started back before the Great War within West Virginia once again near the town of Flatswoods, as many people would go on to supposedly see dark, mysterious figures with glowing eyes, with many other individuals just laughing it off as a stupid idea that aliens were real. For one man named Colton Pickens, he knew that these were not just rumors, as he had claimed many times that he was one of the victims of these creatures, as he had been taken onto their spaceship and subjected to many different experiments. But like many that claimed they had seen aliens, his witness account was just laughed off by the local police and instantly dismissed, making him look like a madman. When the war came, stories of the Flatswoods monster died down for a bit. As the Wastelanders started venturing out into the world some more, more reports would come out that these creatures were still here and were now capturing more Wastelanders for their experiments. What these aliens want with humans? no one really knows. But it is quite clear that they do not come in peace, as they will harm anyone that comes into contact with them. Similar to the Zetan aliens in terms of what they actually do, Flatswoods monsters are far more deadly and also much more terrifying if you were to come into contact with them. But saying all that, if you were to come into contact with them, would you really remember the encounter or would it just be a faded memory?
Post-war America was an extremely rough time. Scavenging for resources was a necessity and unfortunately many would die not being able to find food and clean water. Because of this, this drove many to desperate means to survive, including cannibalism. But with the world heavily irradiated and filled with horrific dangers, this brought about a new horror to the wasteland in the form of the creature that would be known as the Wendigo. For one man known as Morris Stevens, he would be a victim of this and would become one himself as he had committed acts of cannibalism. These heavily mutated humanoid creatures would be extremely deadly if they were to be encountered, with their dark grey skin and their heavily mutated bodies that would have elongated limbs as well as their horrifically sharp teeth and sharp claws on their fingers. But not only that, they would just be terrifying to see with their face being extremely skeletal with long stringy hair and blackened eye sockets. Rumours of the Wendigo started spreading during the pre-war years with many believing the first Wendigo being housed within the Savage Divide. There were many different reasons for why an individual would turn into one of these creatures, but all of the time the only linking factor was that they had eaten human flesh at some point, which triggered this mutation. Why the Wendigo only locates itself within Appalachia is unknown, but that's not to say that Wendigos do not live out there in the wider known world, just away from human eyes. But now in the post-war world, these Wendigos spread all over the Appalachia wasteland, looking to live away from human eyes. However, if they do witness you in their home, or even nearby, they will become extremely violent, smacking you with their vicious claws, and even causing those in power armor to stagger backwards. These creatures are not easily taken out, and most likely if they were to get the one up on you and kill you and your team, they will happily tuck into your flesh and pile up your bones in their cave or wherever they have made their home. You best pray that on your travels you do not get ambushed by one of these horrifying creatures or get so desperate that you eat human flesh and turn into the cryptid known as the Wendigo. And ending our list is the ever popular myth that has become something of a fan favourite. That is the cryptid known as the Mothman. The Mothman became somewhat of a legend all over pre-war America, being known as one of the best pieces of folklore within Appalachia. This mythical creature was said to be a terrifying half-man, half-moth hybrid that would stalk around the area of the town known as Point Pleasant. This sole story started the obsession with cryptids with many organisations set up of cryptid enthusiasts and aggressive conspiracy theorists that were desperate to uncover what the story was behind the Mothman and what was the cause of it. Because of how popular this folk story was, many tourists ventured into the area and would actively look out for the creature and in the end, an attraction was made known as the Mothman Museum located in Point Pleasant to show off all of what this creature was known for as well as stories that would be brought by anyone that came to the venue. In the end though, the Mothman man was just a fun story people could tell others about. It was not seen as a true story similar to other cryptids such as Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, with scientists saying it was not worth their time to look into it as it held no scientific value. But whilst most saw this as a harmless tale, one group would be forming secretly worshipping this mythical creature and trying to find a way to bring it into reality. This cult would go on to be called the Cult of the Mothman and its members would be heavily devoted to this creature image, stating that it was a divine being, as well as practicing numerous rituals at many different shrines in the Appalachia area. For a while, the cult just did their own thing in secret. That was until October 2077, where the cult knowing the nuclear holocaust was on the horizon would try and summon the creature to benefit from its supposed cosmic wisdom and gain protection from it. On the 22nd of October, the summoning worked as the Mothman made itself visible to one member of the cult, Brother Charles, who immediately shared what he had witnessed and been told by the creature. Here, Brother Charles explained that there was to be floods to come on the following day and with that clear message the followers saw it best to gather on the rooftops to make sure they avoided what was coming and praised the mothman for saving them but it wasn't just them as the bombs got closer to being launched, more and more people all over started claiming they had also seen the Mothman. The myth was becoming real, but so too had
had its prediction. That following day the flood came, but it was not how the cult thought it would go. Instead of being your traditional flood, this flood was the nuclear fallout, and as the cult saw this coming in the distance, they would get down from their roofs and take to shelter within the Lucky Hole Mine, where they would continue to live and survive through the apocalypse. With the world now being pretty much destroyed, these Mothmen creatures come out more and more, with many surrounding the Appalachian area. To many, they could go ages without seeing just one, but lurking there in the shadows, one Mothman could be there, with many escaping before they could be visible. But if anyone were to attack these creatures, they would feel the full wrath of these mythical beings as they attack the individual with their sonic blasts to stagger them, and using their wings to really hit them hard. To this day, many of the original cult members have died, but their legacy lives on, with two rival cults being established, known as the Dim Ones who worship the Red-Eyed Mothmen, and the Enlightened worshipping the Purple-Eyed Mothmen, also known as the Wise Mothmen, claiming them to be the true deity, and the Red-Eyed Ones being the Fire-Eyed Lepidoptera, that is the Deceiver. The Mothmen are some of the most mythical beings throughout the Appalachian Wasteland, and if you are lucky enough to see one, you best hope it doesn't take offence to anything you do, or it will take you down brutally. But with all that said, all of the cryptids are terrifying creatures to come into contact with. For years they have just been tales that spread throughout all of their select regions before the Great War and after. But now that the world is in a very different place, these myths are far more common, causing many residents to go missing due to their territory growing year on year. There's sure to be more of these myths out there in the wider world, some being timid beasts and some being vicious creatures. But will we ever get the luxury of seeing these folklore creatures? Only time can really tell. But for now, these have been the mythical cryptids from the Fallout universe. So what's your favourite cryptid from the Fallout universe and what other pieces of folklore or mythology would you like to see within the Fallout games? Let me know in the comments below. I want to say a massive thank you for watching this video and a big thanks to my supporters who allow me to continue making them, including our small fishes, my big fishes, Christopher, Last Persona user and Arto Krem, my YouTube channel Wise Ones, Fiery Italian, Ico the Wolf and Sith Lord 906 my sharks, Well Such Gaming, Jason X117 and Breadbeard and my Megalodons, Sinus, Cody, Hazy Thoughts, and Chernobyl Stalker, as well as anyone that has done a super thanks on one of my videos. I really appreciate the thanks and everything that you give to this channel, so thank you so much. You can also support this channel if you want by following the link in the description below or pressing that join button, buying yourself some merch or G Fuel with my link, or just by simply giving this video a like, leaving a nice comment, or subscribing if you haven't already. But that is all for now. Thank you again for watching and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.